first of all, thank you very much and welcome. For those of you that have been here before, welcome back. We appreciate each and every one of you guys taking time out of your day to come um, to, to be here with us. And here on Veteran Influencers, we always try to shine light as it is in the title, Veteran Influencers. So veterans that are actually doing things outside of their MOS, whether you've gotten out or you're active duty still, uh, we like to kind of like give shine to what what um, what veterans are doing outside to show that we're more than just what we do as our main job. So um, our guest is actually, he's actually no stranger to the platform. He's been on the Ask a Vet. I don't think I've actually done a one-on-one interview with you before on Veteran Influencers, right? No. Not yet? Hey, but you know what Hey, there's always time. You know, we, we definitely going to make it work. But uh, my, I got a special guest today, as always. That's what we do. We always have a special guest. His name is Kadeem Walker. And uh, just a little background of his story. You know, say he was a, a prior drone soldier, uh, prior Marine, you know, obviously. And um, he, when he got out, he actually started. Did you Now, did you start while you were in? Or did you actually start your clothing when you got out your brand? No, I started the brand when I was out of the Marine Corps. Sure. Okay, so yeah. he started his brand when he was out, and this is why uh, I actually tell you, and a lot of other entrepreneurs will tell you as well, just get started. And you know, I don't want to give away too much. We're gonna actually go through it uh, with this actual interview, but he has a few things that are coming up here in the near future that I definitely want to give some shine to, and you know, we want to go over his background as well. So, like I said, Mr. Kadeem Walker, welcome to the platform, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me, my guy, as usual, man. You know how it is. We yes, are on the court, my brother, since since we started. So it's my <laughs> pleasure. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Diane Potts. He's cute, kid. <laughs> yeah, they on your neck already. You know what I'm saying? But uh yeah. <laughs> but hey, no, like I said, um, I definitely want to go over a little bit of your background uh, because we haven't actually done a full interview. I don't want to do too much because I definitely plan on having a full interview with you, um, obviously with your permission. But, I, you know, you do have some things that are coming out. I definitely want to give some light to. And I want to do this a lot more often. Like, like I said earlier, whether it's like a 10, 15 minute type interview style, I want to do it a little bit more often. But um, if you can kind of go over like, you, you know, real quick about your background of being in the military, your uh, background of being an entrepreneur, and then we'll start going from there because I wanna I wanna hit uh, hard on some things that you got going on now. Yeah, quick background for military. Uh, what I joined in what 2004. I was a Lima Company Third Battalion recruit. Uh, from there, I mean, I went to boot camp, MCT, MOS school, Fort Leonard, Missouri. Then I was stationed at Pendleton for four years. Did three tours to Iraq. I was with. Mm. Uh, truck company in Pendleton, but I, I got attached with 1-5, did my first tour with Bravo Company 1-5, my second tour 1-7, uh, um, to right there, right around the Syrian border to al Qam, and then my third tour with 2-5, um, right back in Ramadi, Iraq again, so, and then from there, I uh, went to Hawaii, did two years out there in Hawaii, kind of got all my what is it, PME and all of that taken care of? <laughs> it's artist course, map course, or MAI course, all that stuff. And then from there, I went over to Paris Island and I did almost dang there four years as a hat man. I was down there for a long time. So, Same here. Yeah, man. Then I got out. Once I got out in 2013, I went up north and I started working. A lot of people don't know I worked in the oil oil field for a couple of years so I was a roughneck out there being a snubber on top of them crazy behind oil rigs man so I did that for some years and then after that started installing bridge expansion joints all over the northeast and then from there I moved to over here to DC area and now I work as a, for a company called um, the architect of the capital and I'm the assistant supply management officer for them um, so for all the house office buildings that fall under the House of Representatives. And then mm. as far as clothing, man, like me and my my partner, we actually went to boot camp together. So both of us started in boot camp together. Me and Antoine, we went to boot camp. Um, we, we stayed close throughout our entire career. Uh, went to Iraq together, all of that stuff, man. And then when we both got out, he was a recruiter. I was a general instructor. 
So when we got out, um, he kind of was out west and then he ended up moving out this way. And then when I finished with the bridges, I was moving out this way. He was already here. And I was kind of just telling him like, man, you know, I've been thinking lately about, you know, uh, starting a clothing line. And then he was like, man, remember we used to always talk about that when we was like last criminals together and stuff. So then the man, literally, we was just kicking it one day. We was like, let's just do it. Then, Cause I've been thinking that he was saying, I've been thinking about the same thing too. So yeah, man, I think like a month later, we sat there, we, we brought our LLC, we, and then we became business owners, man. It was just like that. So we just said, we gonna do it. We're not gonna waste no time. We put our money together, me and him went 50, 50 and we got our logo done, paid our graphic designer, you know, and, and we just started building from there, bro. Mm. Man, that's crazy too, you know, and we'll definitely harp on this in a little bit, but you know, a lot of people have, have told me and even during like interviews they're that um, they're afraid to have partners because partners require some type of relationship. And, you know, it's like that sometimes is that fine line of mixing uh, personal and business. And some people are all business. Some people are all, you know what I'm saying? They want it to be personal as well, but with every relationship, there's some type of like maintenance to, for, you know, to upkeep, you know, you want to keep everybody happy. You want to keep people from quitting. You want to keep people like on it. Like some people, they get like kind of lackadaisical. So how do you, like, how, how were you able to maintain uh, that relationship with your, your business partner for so long and like keep like the hunger of wanting to continue to grow? Man, it's a couple of things. Like one of the biggest things is compromise. Uh, another thing is just uh, being understanding, having an open ear. Um, but honestly, I used to feel the same way because where I come, where I grew up at, like you don't really grow up trusting people like that. You know what I mean? Because the type of area I grew up around, the people I grew up around, and all of that, like we was taught as kids, like you don't trust nobody. You know what I'm saying? But um, actually, man, to be real. Um, I don't know if you know who Anisha is. Uh, she she on Instagram and all that. Anisha, she she got a dope brand, Next Level, and all of that stuff. And she got another brand she just dropped. But she was the one who called me one day and was like, "I see you hustling, man. You're killing yourself. Y'all both working hard." And then she was like, "Man, you you know y'all need an army. You got to have people on your team. Mm -hmm. You know you know that don't got an army with them." that don't got a full team, a full staff with them. And then at that day, that's when I decided no matter what role, you know, whatever bumps and bruises me and Antoine have, like we need each other in order to do what we got going on. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that with us, we complement each other. Like with me, I suck with the uh, electronics and all of that stuff. And <laughs> you know, like, I, I suck at it. He's extremely good at it. He bought the most gangster computer nerd I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's really good at that. I'm really good at, uh, like, logistics and all of that. And that's what I do for my government job. Uh, <clears throat> so, like, we both, we both able to complement each other. And we both able to cover that ground. When, especially, like, when it comes time when you really grind it and then one person is tired and then the other person is not you know what I'm saying? If you by yourself, you got to take a break with us. Right. You know, I see when, when he getting wore out. So I'll step up to the plate. And then sometimes, hey, Papa, what up, sis? Sometimes I see, uh, he sees when I'm getting wore out and he'll step up to the plate. And we ain't got to, there's no talking about it. Like we know, you know what I'm saying? Right. And like also, uh, one of the big thing is that people don't give, Time to learn the other the other person. That's one of the biggest things. Like if if I know he got something going on in his life or something, I'm not gonna hound him about sending me some files or sending me this information for the business or something because I know he got something personal going on. And the same right. thing for him, what he does for me. So the the reason why I'm saying that is a lot of people don't give a partnership time to develop. 
you got to learn each other. You got to learn when the other person is is not is kind of down when the other person is 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 not you know not well or something like that and y'all gotta work together you can't chastise each other when the other person ain't pulling their weight because you gotta really understand what's going on with that person and y'all gotta be open and honest with each other and i think if you build that type of relationship i think your organization or whatever whatever your goals is that you're trying to reach is going to be even more powerful if it's more than one person but i didn't used to believe that back in the day you know what i'm saying right i just you know but once me and antoine really started getting into it and we had our arguments and all of that stuff and then we 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 built a relationship and now now i can appreciate having a partnership vice versa just me doing all this by myself, man, because it's, it's a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? To all my entrepreneurs out there that are doing it by yourself, my hat's all go to my hat's <laughs> off, because it's tough. It's tough, so. But that's, we just balance it, man. We communicate and, we, you know, we keep a good relationship and, and, you know, we take care of each other when, when one isn't pulling the weight of the, you know what I'm saying? So, right. So, no, that's like, that's a great point that you say, because, you know, whenever you're starting something new, like, especially like this, I had so many questions. Yeah, I was watching YouTube videos. I was looking up on the internet, figuring out like, what, what are the best strategies, best, best ways of like, how I could be successful and where I'm not just like, taking two steps forward and then 19 steps back. And one right. thing I realized that a lot of people that are successful have in common is there's always a team. Um, now granted in the beginning, you know, you're going to want to do a lot of it by yourself because there's no real revenue that's coming in. Um, you can get, I, I liked my whole thing was like, I wanted to get advice from people that, that were already established or that knew how to work in a certain area. Like when I was learning how to edit videos, I listen, I, yeah. Hey, and until you've actually ran a, either a YouTube channel or you've edited videos, you do not know the stress. <laughs> I'm trying to learn it. You know, um, and but before I wanted to actually like hire somebody to do it for me, I wanted to experience what it took to do that. So you have an understanding of it. And I have all the respect in the world for people that actually do edit videos and those that do YouTube. So and then you get the times the camera don't want to work or you forgot to charge the battery or one of your programs ain't working. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or a part of it ain't, it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It didn't render correctly. Or like, you realize that your your camera, you forgot to hit record. Oh my, oh my goodness. The stress is real. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I wanted to, to kind of experience that before getting a team. But it gets to a point to where you're working harder. You're putting more in than you're getting out of it. So at that point to me is when you start to branch out a little bit. Even if it's like job one job at a time, where you start paying someone to do it. And then eventually, you know, like you said, you found somebody that you could kind of trust and that had the same type interest and the same, um, uh, the, the, I guess, yeah, you could say the same interest as you as far as to see this thing out. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, that, yeah, that, that's awesome to find because it, it's hard to find people that, that generally care about your well being. Like a lot of people that, you know, when you talk about this whole business relationship, uh, people's interest is money and they don't necessarily care about how well off you are as a person. They, they're, they're, they're strictly down the line with, oh, this is an opportunity for me to make money. So I do this. And that's why I say about this fine line between business and personal, because I definitely want to have somebody that genuinely cares about who I am personally and about my well-being to be on my team. Right. Yep. And I feel you. Hey, man, you need a lot of them, too. Right. <laughs> it really start like, when you when your business really start growing, like, now to a point where we starting to grow, like, we starting to branch out and grow way more than we was before. And like I'm like now I'm starting to open my mind to like man I need to start paying people for this or I need to start paying this person for this or I need to hire somebody for this. So like I'm legitimately finally to a point like where we really about to thinking about you know maybe hiring like a somebody or doing like an internship or something like that because it's starting to it's starting to move man but 
you know, I'm gonna put my put, we're gonna put our feet down and see how far that take us for now. And then, uh, but I definitely think that's coming soon. So why clothing? Now, I guess the I want to preface this by saying that typically people that want to do something to do with like designing, right? They have that type of artistic like side of their brain is like very much empowered. See, it, and, and they can usually visualize what how they want see, things to see. Like you, could, I, I bet your interior designing game is like on point. It is that's me? I knew it. Yeah. Like, I be, man, my old lady, she'll tell you, like, I be, I be like, when we buy stuff for the house and stuff, I be like, nah, you got it. Then as soon as we get in the store, I be like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nah. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> I need to go with this. But I definitely feel that, for real. Like, it's just a creative mind, man. You know what I mean? Like, we all, all of us, entre most of us entrepreneurs just got creative minds. So that's, that's why we be the way we are. You know what I'm saying? So that's facts too. Like why clothing though? Like what, what made you like geared toward clothing? It's like, because clothing, like for you, especially being a designer of the clothing, so you design it and you promote it. And you know what I'm saying? There, there's much, it's more of an art of than just designing the clothing. So you're not just a clothing designer. That's what makes you an actual like all around entrepreneur. Like what made you choose clothing as your lane? Because like it's, so everything like that's that's what me and Antoine we was coming up in the Marine Corps like every single week we would go buy clothes to go out you know what I'm saying and like be fresh in front of everybody you know what I mean so like I'm serious though like when we used to go to the clubs in California like I remember when we first started all of us used to wear all black just to catch like everybody attention and yeah. so started and then we had our own little posse and then we'll change it up in different colors and stuff. And then me and Antoine always had our own kind of like same type of style, like while we was in the Marine Corps together. And then even afterwards, and plus with him doing, being a music producer, all of that goes into the same pot, man. It's, it's all hip hop, fashion, it's all cultural. You know what I'm saying? So it's for me, it's everything. Like I always, even in high school, people that tell you that grew up with me, like I always had something, you know what I'm saying? I, I always had a car in like 10th, 9th, 10th and 11th grade. I think 11th grade, I bought three cars. So I always been like flashy, you know what I'm saying? I always had the big rims on my car back home. Like if, if I was going out, I always had all the jewelry on, you know what I mean? So I always been just a flashy person. And, you know, like the hip hop and the culture added together into it. <clears throat> both of us really like both. So it just was a natural lane for us to decide to go down, man. So mm -hmm. that's, that's really it. Like, it's just, it's just natural swag. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like how you, like you spoke about the, the jewelry. Now, granted, this was prior to you doing your clothing, the jewelry, the cars and everything. I, I've seen a lot of people pick certain, um, uh, you know, certain jobs that they want to have certain careers because they, they think there's a certain type end of the rainbow type thing in their form. Like I'm going to make this much money or I'm going to get these type results. Um, so with that being said, what are some of the negative things or what are some of like the struggles that you actually had to endure while you were actually going through these process? Cause like I said, something as simple as editing a video, something as simple as, you know, you turn your computer on and one bit of it don't work or you go to turn your soundboard on and the sounds don't work or the mic don't want to go straight. All these little things that go into it or for some reason you can't say the, the program's not letting you save the file as a certain type of file, but you gotta, you're trying to get your, 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 um, your mock-ups put out there, but for some reason you can't get it to share. Like what type of struggles and like like starting with like some of the little petty things that people wouldn't think would be an issue to some of the bigger things that like actually causes to take up some of your time. Oh, man. So for you, you mean as far as time with all of that? What's that? You mean as far as like what takes up time or just what we're struggling in, period? Like what, like what are some of the struggles that people are going to go through? Like I said, a lot of people see other people like selling clothes or whatever, and they, they don't know or doing YouTube and they think it's sweet. 
until you actually do it and you realize it's a lot harder than you thought. Like what, what are some of those things that you went through when you started your clothing business? I think the biggest, the biggest thing that I went through was learning, was learning like social media, was learning um, how to use these computers. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, technology, all of that was my biggest downfall. Cause before all of this, I never had like social media. I had a Facebook, but I never used it. I post like one right. picture a couple months or something like that. And I was never a fan of uh, social media to be honest at all, like period, I hated it. And then when I started the business, you know, everybody was like, bro, you gotta, you gotta do social media. You gotta get out there. You get, people gotta see it. So me learning all of this, like if you one of them people in life right now, that's going through that same feeling like, oh, I hate social media. I don't want to be on social media. Um, you don't want to learn all the new technology that's coming out with the phones and the computers and all that. <clears throat> I tell you right now, if you're one of them people, you're going to struggle the rest of your life. And it's not, it's not even about being a, a business owner. You know what I'm saying? Like you need, the world is changing. And you need all of that to move forward in this world because all of that is going to start being the wave. Like that's, that's going to be how people making money. Like cryptocurrency and all of that stuff is real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like... Is, is really the world we living in is really moving toward everything being electronic. Yeah, you so know, outside of, outside of the technology aspect, um, the other thing that 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 I wish I would have um, known in the beginning is like um, I wish I would have just asked more questions. To be honest, you know, I, I we kind of went in just guns blazing and we was like screw it let's just do it you know what i'm like, saying like specific business questions or like about yeah, designing and just about business about like llc like learning the actual foundation of being a business owner i wish i would have did more digging into that vice versa just taking off in the beginning with the clothes and stuff and not building the foundation first because now we had to backtrack all of that. We had to learn about QuickBooks. We had to learn about, um, you know, um, all these different finances and stuff that, that we deal with. We had to learn about business taxes. We had to learn about LLC. We had to learn about uh, getting permitted to sell in the city that you live in. All of that stuff, man. Trademark and all of that. Like, I wish I would have started off did a lot more research in the beginning and then started a brand but we jumped right into it and we was like we'll figure it out later but when you do that to yourself um it kind of it kind of uh sets you back once you are ready to to start with that you got to backpedal through all of the time that you spent without it and you got to get right. all of that organized as well so in the beginning try to get all your books correct would be my advice um, try to understand um, how your business taxes and all of that stuff work and just build a solid foundation in the very beginning. Um, vice versa, waiting too, too long. And then you got to kind of backpedal and get all that stuff fixed. So you said to, to do all these things. I always noticed that it's like, even like some of the things that I went through, I, I could just say, I, I wish I would have done this, but actually doing the research, it takes, it's not as easy as just Googling how to do this. It's like, you got to kind of like keep going through things and asking questions because it's not going to always show you exactly what you need. So is there like any like one top, one stop shop that you can uh, reference people to go to where it would actually like help them to get started on starting a business? Uh, yeah, you can read through like, um, uh, what is that? Uh, Hold on, let me see where I got it at. You can read through like um, what is it? US USP. Hold on, give me one second. Cause yeah, I of tell course. Information so they really can can um know because like us for instance, that's a, that's a good question you asked. Like us for instance, we started off and we went and brought our LLC through legal zone. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Trying to trying to do things the right way and stuff like that. And we pay like 
seven hundred and something dollars for our LLC. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because we paid for like uh, legal zoom to like a free lawyer and all of that stuff. But now I know you don't need none of that. Like you can just go get your LLC and all you have to do at that point is just um, register your business um, with with the city you live in and all of that. And then you're straight. Like you don't, you don't need, that's what it is. So you can go to irs.gov and you can go on there Register for your LLC is free. You get it. They give you your EIN number, which is your business tax ID. They give you that. All you got to do is write that down. You take it to the city that you're, whatever city you're in, register your business in that city. And that way you can go ahead and just, uh, you know, you can start work. Like if you wanted to do a pop-up or something like that, you are already registered. But if you don't have all of that, that's when people can come up to you, police can come up to you, take all your merchandise, all of that stuff. So it's a lot of it's a lot of things like that. But IRS.gov is a good one because you can go on there and get your LLC, start your business. Another one is, uh, you know, you can go on like whatever state you're in and just Google like state tax, learn how to pay your taxes for your business. The website is pretty much explain all that to you. So stuff like that is 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 definitely some good tips for people to know instead of taking like the, the normal like legal zone route that a lot of people do um, that you can just take those different routes so you don't got to pay all that money out of pocket. It's a lot faster and it's a lot of information, especially on like IRS.gov. You can go on there and kind of look at a whole bunch of stuff. So stuff like that. So, like, when people are starting to stuff out, when do you actually suggest that they actually uh, go in there to try to get the LLC? Because just from, like, some of the things that I was reading, it's just because you don't have an LLC on something, it doesn't mean that someone can still use your idea, right? So, if you've already shown to make some type of money or, like, you've already shown a history of utilizing that potential or that uh, specific brand, then... Right. People like you can go, you know, if you had to go to court, you could still, um, you know, make sure you're still able to use it, even if you don't have an actual LLC. So, like, when do you, when would you actually suggest, um, that somebody gets an LLC for like a business idea? Do you, do you, should they wait until they've already made some type of money from it? Or, mm. you think, like, if you have an idea, just automatically just go out there and, and do it? Um, I think it all depends on how far the person is willing to go. I mean, my, my personal advice would be to go ahead and just uh, get your LLC when you come up with a solid idea. But you got to, I mean, you I, I say that you got to be firm in that you're ready to actually pursue it. You know what I'm saying? There's no point in getting an LLC and then you don't do nothing about it. Now you just got an LLC just sitting out there for no reason. <laughs> which, which we actually ran into, to be honest. With Simple okay. Fresh, when we went to go, when we went to get our stuff trademarked and all that, it was a guy up in New York that owns a company called Simple Fresh. And so when we went on there to do our trademark and all of that, that's another thing. We paid like three hundred and something dollars to start our trademark, and then when we went to do it, it got denied. And so we like, well, why are we getting denied? So we had to hire a lawyer. So we paid a couple of hundred more for the lawyer. The neighbors telling us, well, it's this guy up here in New York. We can in contact them, blah, 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 blah. So they ended up contacting them, and then we asked them, like, we asked the lawyer, like, could we contact them and see if we can talk this dude out of it because it hadn't been active. Mm. So we, we ended up talking to the guy on the phone. You know, and he was like, hey, with all due respect, I like what you guys got, you young guys got going on, but I'm really not really re- willing to release the name. So we had to change our name and all of that in order to even do the trademark. So we had to add like an extra space and then bring the last two words together like to do our trademark because that guy wouldn't let his go. Yeah. So stuff like that. So, you know, it's a lot of things that come along with the business side of all this. A lot of people see us doing the videos with the clothing and stuff, but the real stuff is when we not on camera, for real, because that's when we be out here really hustling, hurting, not sleeping, and all that stuff. Like, it's, it really is the truth, you know what I'm saying? 
No, absolutely. So, it's it's crazy that you say that. Something that you would figure would be simple is coming up with the actual business name, right? Yeah, yeah. I nope. mean, all of that. You be, you be, you might think it's simple, but it, it really ain't, man. What it, up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's absolutely it's not. not and, man. and uh it, and like I said, I I definitely went through the the whole trademark search and everything before coming up with veteran influencers. But I wanted to have a name that that said what it is that I wanted to do. Right. It took me months upon months, which I'm. I, I wish I would have really? written down all the. Oh, absolutely. I wish I would have written down all the names that I came up with before. Yeah. Like even my personal <laughs> Instagram and Stan Chris Mac Lev Ten. Like, what is that? What is that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I knew I like to do handstands. I was like, let me put handstand in because I thought that if I put handstand in the name, that it like updated the algorithm some, somehow to search for handstands. Because that's all, when I first started Instagram, that's all I did was just doing handstands and I did fitness and stuff. So, anyways, but so now coming down to doing something like this, I knew I wanted to challenge myself by doing a podcast and I knew I wasn't good at doing this stuff. I wasn't good at speaking. I wasn't good yeah. at visual, at like doing visual. And yeah. it was a huge challenge to me. And now, I mean, from YouTube, I have some YouTube videos, 15, 10, 12, 13,000 views. You know what I'm saying? Like 300, 400 comments. I'm not saying I figured it out, but I never quit. That's wrong. That's wrong. You know? And that's what, and that's what I be telling people, man. Like, I, I really, truly, like, firmly believe, like, the people that make it to be real, like, extremely wealthy and successful in this world are the people who, sim it's, like, simple. Like, they just don't stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people, they give up on a vision that they got, and then they start another one a couple of weeks later. Then they give on up, up on that a couple months later. Then they start something different. And like, you got to stay consistent you got to be willing to take them bumps and bruises and people got to stop looking at stuff as losses like man i don't lost thousands of dollars matter of fact <clears throat> that one shipment i got with them burgundy track suits that was the best drop i ever did and we sold that first day i probably sold like almost two thousand and something dollars worth of track suits the first day we dropped them and then a couple, about a week into it, we were still selling more. And then one of my homegirls hit me up and she was like, damn, I just watched this jump and it bled. And I'm like, what you mean it bled? And she was like, like it bled, like the whole thing, all the white turned uh, pink from the burgundy ink. Mm. And I was like, are you serious? And it never even crossed my mind because you tell these vendors, like make sure you pre-wash the stuff before you sell it, all of that. So it yeah. never even crossed my mind to tell them to pre-wash it. And so I had to refund like 2000 and something dollars back to the people who didn't want to keep them or, or they just wanted money. <laughs> so I had to, yeah, I had to refund all that money back, man. And that was the biggest drop I ever had. But that's what I'm saying. It's not a loss. Yeah. It hurt, but it's a learning experience. Like I learned now whatever vendor I'm using, I got to read the, the fine print and it says pre-wash. All the stuff pre-wash is not going to fade when you wash it, stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of bumps and bruises you're going to run into, but are you going to stop or are you going to keep going? Are you going to let it take you out? You know, COVID even made me stop for a while. Like me and my business partner, we talked, we was like, man, I don't think we need to keep going. We need to stop, blah, blah, blah. Stuff's getting bad. Then his best friend died from it. He was only 36 years old. Then the next week, his uncle caught it. You know what I'm saying? And he was in a coma at the same time. And I was like, man. So he had to fly back to Detroit. And that's, that goes to show you what I'm talking about earlier about you got to take care of your business partner. Like when that, when that happened, not one day he was gone that I say, hey, bro, can you send me these files? Or can you do this? Or can you do that? Like, nah, I got it. The business mind. It's mine until you come back. And he was gone for almost two months. And then he came back and then we started hitting the ground running again. You know, so stuff like that happened, but you can't look at it as a loss. It's a learning experience as part of life. You're going to get the same thing out of regular nine to five. 
You know what it is? Same thing. Is I look at like I hopefully I say this terminology right because I'm about to freestyle the hell out of this. <laughs> so I look at a nine to five job is like like a like the G fund in your TSP. It's state. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't the highest percent, but it's safe. There's not really any risk involved, and you're going to consistently make this bull crap amount of money yeah. that you put into your TSP. Yeah. And then you, you know, and then I look at being an entrepreneur is is either gambling or putting it to like the I fund or something like that, to where there's some risk involved. You might not, you might not always be gaining, but eventually it's going to get to that point. So you're going to probably lose a little bit of money. And then you build back up, um, and it's it's not as consistent, but it's gonna eventually it's gonna always go up as long as you keep the money in there. And keeping yep. the money in there is staying on track and not quitting. So it's the same type thing. Like you see people being a hustler. That's yeah. all it is. You gotta hustle. When you get to a certain point, you gotta flip it, and you gotta keep flipping it, and keep flipping it until they come back to, to the way you want it. I remember a lot of people used to ask me, going going back to what I was talking about, about like being flashy and stuff. Like a lot of people, like I, I always been a thinker. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people used to ask me like, Kadeem, why you always got these fancy cars? Like it don't even make no sense. But ever since I was 15 years old, I've been buying cars. But what I used to use them for, what people don't know that I never talk about, like whenever I got into a real bad financial bind, I always sold one of my cars. Mm-hmm. So I always kept something expensive ever since I was a teenager. Like I always had something to fall back on. Like it was always a plan for me to be able to get out of a situation if I ran into something, even with my clothing line. Like I got a plan. Like if this if this mess up, then I'm going to do this until I'm ready to get back with this. You know what I'm saying? You got to have a plan with every action you take. And I think a lot of people simply don't want to sit down and write stuff down and create a plan. And the hardest part about creating a plan is the discipline to follow it. (laughs) That's the hardest part. You have to have this, you have to have discipline. When you say you're going to do something, you have to do it. That's it. Like, that's something that I really learned. Like, it's no room for procrastination. Like, you can't because you're going to fall behind. So, like, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And that's the bottom line. Like, it's going to happen. I think you got to have that mentality. No, that's an absolute fact. It's like, like, I know me and T always talk about it a lot on uh, on Ask a Vet. There's uh, the majority of days from from working a, a regular full-time job, being in the military, and just yeah. life, life in general, moving, PCSing, there have been Fridays where I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this. Man, facts, bro. <laughs> but For real. the end result is six months every Friday. Never missed a single Friday. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do we have the most followers in the world? No. Do we have the most views? No. But I'll tell you what, I've had promo videos that have cracked like 5,000 views on a promo video. That's, you know that consi- that's that consistency, bro. That's that consistency. And that's, that's that discipline. We got to remain consistent, man. Yeah. Actually, a dude I work with, man, my, it's an old dude I work with. He, he my supervisor. So he like the one in charge and then it's me and then everybody else. Right. But he, he told me something about a year and a half ago. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, uh, I did something with, with the guys that worked for me that he pulled me in the office. He was like, didn't you tell them that you got to have a meeting with these guys every Monday or blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah. He was like, did you miss this Monday? And I was like, oh, yeah, I did. I did. My bad, boss. And he was like, nah, Kadeem, like, that ain't it. He was like, you have to remain consistent. You cannot tell these people that you're going to do this and then you don't show up one day. And I know that from being in the military in my whole entire other career. But sometimes you get complacent. Sometimes you you think at, in, a, in a higher level role or a supervisor role, sometimes you feel, oh, it's not that important sometimes. But he, he stopped me that first day. He was like, didn't you tell him you're going to be there on Monday? 
you got to be there. So then when he told me that and I fixed that at work, that's when I, in my head, when I was home, I'm like, bro, I got to do that with my business. If I say I'm going to do it, you know, I'm going to have it then, I got to, I got to do it. You know what I'm saying? So I had to start taking that serious and I got to start taking every single person serious. You know what I'm saying? Every inquiry, every question. So, yeah, man. So it's, it's real though. So like, you know, it's crazy that you speak about the whole consistency, like, and I like to talk to people in, in real time, meaning I, I, like I want to hear the real stuff because let's be honest, not everything you see on social media is real. And a lot, of, a lot of people, what they call <laughs> front for the gram, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and yeah. so like, I like to actually know about the struggles that people, I'm like, I, I need to, for people to, to tell me straight up about how things are. Cause I, I'm a realist. I need to see the realism part of it and not just like, Oh, you can be, you know what I'm saying? If you have the six pack, all yeah. these <laughs> blocking nah, on your work. It's a work. It's a work. It takes a lot of sacrifice. And for me, like me being married, like it take even more, it take me and her too, you know what I'm saying? Like she gotta be understanding to what I got going on. I think she posted the other day, like it's a lot of nights that I don't even make it to bed till like four in the morning. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of nights. Like tonight she up to sleep. So it's a lot of nights I don't make it to bed till late because I'm in her I'm here working because I still got a nine to five. Like I told you earlier, I just was getting off. I was just getting home. So then I come home, I spent like an hour with the kids and then I'm back down in the basement now I'm working this job. <laughs> so it's part of work too. And that's 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 how it is, man. Like you you gotta sacrifice time. You gotta sacrifice things you you don't like or you gotta sacrifice things that you love to do. Like you gotta sacrifice all of that. You know what I'm saying? But you also gotta find that balance too. Cause even if even if you don't have a family, you gotta find balance within yourself also. And one big thing I learned is that you have to sleep. I used to go like days sleeping one, two hours a night. My Fitbit last year, I brought it for that reason. For me? My <laughs> Fitbit average for last year was two and a half hours a night last year. The average for the whole year, two and a half hours on my Fitbit. That's crazy. And see, yeah. this is why it's so, when I tell you about the, going back to the whole realism thing, why it's important, yeah. because I've seen, I've seen in the last, when did I meet you? Like a year ago? Mm -hmm. maybe, a little bit, maybe a little bit less. But from the time that I've seen, you know, I did a little research on your post and, uh, you know, uh, T talked about you here and there. But from the time that I actually met you, I've literally watched the, the, watch you increase by in your improvements throughout the different clothing like the standard of clothing and i think that's why it, to me it was important that i see that because it, it, it motivates me to know that there's there's a there's an upstairs to where i'm trying to do it's not just struggle struggle grind 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 struggle right but when you're doing something new like i was doing with podcasting i look at other people's podcasts as well but just like watching people like you and george anthony i knew him before he had a gym man, I he dope man i've been i've been watching him ever since we did that uh that that interview the first time i do he go dope. hard huh? i mean like in a lot of the stuff that he be doing man his videos is awesome it is, and guess what? He got a team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, what's special about your team is not only do you have uh, a backbone support in your wife, but she's actually a part of your team. And if you can have a spouse that, that supports you, like supports you, supports you, that's huge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like... And it's, yeah, and then that, that's, a, that's another thing too, man. I think a lot of people... Like, the, the, the world that we live in right now, like, people just follow the wave, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I, be, I be hearing a lot of people always talking about, like, oh, people not supporting my brand, people not doing this, people not doing that. But when I really started looking at stuff, for my brand at least, man, so many people support me, man. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'll never say again, like so support a small business or support my small business. It's already happening. I'm so thankful for like all the friends 
that I got and family that I got because they be supporting heavy, man. Like, every time I do a show, everybody pull up. When I did my first fashion show, dog, all the partners pulled up to that job. You know what I'm saying? And every event that I be doing, like, they go out their way to be at my events and stuff like that, and they help out when I need them and stuff. So I think uh, I think a lot of that support small business, I think a lot of it's just people following the waves because from what I see, even with y'all, with your podcast and stuff, look how many people be on there religiously, like, every week. When I go on there, I be seeing the same names and stuff commenting plus more. That's how I know y'all doing what y'all supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all got that support. So I think people got to just quit all that support a small bit because we are already doing it, bro. Like, I know my friends and family doing it heavy. So I think it's cool, man. I think, uh, but you're right, though. You got to have that team, dog. Like, for sure. For sure, for sure. I know that for a fact now. <laughs> got to have a solid team, man. I'm trying to make my team even bigger. You know what I mean? Well, it's just like, it goes to that whole thing of, you know, the, the people you choose to surround yourself with are, are you're probably the average of the people that you surround yourself with. And I'm pretty right, sure I right, butchered right. that whole thing. But if yep. you want to be a millionaire, hang out with billionaires. Hang out with billionaires. I'm always try right. to be around people that are more successful than you. And right. not only that, but hang around people that are motivating type and they're optimistic you know what I'm saying? They're, they're, they're risky. They're willing to do it. But they're also open with that information because I, I'm going to be honest, like even doing like when I'm trying to get guests for veteran influencers, when I'm trying to get guests for, um, you know, for Ask a Vet, there's a lot of people that aren't willing to reach back to you. There's a lot of people that that they don't want to share their their audience with you. They don't. It's like they they. They, I, I got this, so you can't. And they be tripping, bro. They, they don't know? realize that it's it's. So that's what people fail to realize. It's so much room for everybody to eat. It's too much money in this world. Like that's what they be feeling. The real. I was just talking to a, a, a young lady the other day on the phone. She was telling me like uh, same stuff you're talking about. I'm like, why do you care? Like if somebody's stealing your stuff, so what? Even like with me, I don't, if I see somebody got something like mine, I don't care. I don't care because the reason the reason why I say that is because I know in my mind there ain't nobody gonna beat me, and I'm in my own lane. Like I'm gonna make money regardless. And then if people are trying to kind of mimic what you got going on, that means your stuff looks good. You know what I'm saying? I think people just focus too much energy on the wrong thing, man. Like, don't don't worry about other people. Help other people instead of like trying to get on the cold shoulder because you think they're gonna take your stuff or take your style. Like it's too much. It's too much room to eat out here for that. That's that's so true. It's so crazy that you say that because I started Veteran Influencers and the the whole like one of the purposes or foundations of Veteran Influencers to is to to give be more giving to others. Uh, then I'm willing to, I'm not going to say that I'm willing to do for myself. Like, cause I just feel like it's going to eventually come back, but I'm not like, like I would, I get more out of supporting people and seeing them be successful than I do myself, which some people say is like an actual fault. Um, but I, I truly, if I, if I can get to a point to where my platform is so big that all somebody has to do is show up on my platform as a guest, like Joe Rogan, right? Every time a guest shows up on there, you could have not known who it was, but you're going to leave there knowing who it is. You're going to know about their gear they got or whatever it is, their merch that they're endorsing. And yeah. they're going to get like 25,000 more followers. I want to get to that point to where I can be in a position to do that much more for people. Not necessarily for what I can get for myself. That's what I want, man. Like to be real, like you, you know what I, I my biggest dream is, bro. Like right. for my family, my dad, my my sister, my brother, they kids, my wife, her mother, her stepdad, or whatever, her sisters, you know, and they're all my friends and all her friends. I want everybody to be able to live off what I make. If I can accomplish that goal, to me, that's when I'm gonna die happy. 
Like if I could call all my partners and be like, hey, all y'all stop working. Come on over here, I got it. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of success that I want. Like that's what I'm hungry for. It ain't about me. Like I want all my people to be straight. Everybody I'm cool with that I talk to on a daily basis that call and check up on me every time, them the people that I want to be around me. You know what I'm saying? And I want them to be wealthy off of what I created. Like that's like my overall goal. Like I'm trying to create general generational wealth for my children's children and their children. So three generations after me can survive in this world without even working all off of what I did. You know, that's my that's like my whole goal with all of this to be real. So if I can reach that, I'm happy. No, but what everything you just said is facts. Like I said, it's you know, not to get too like off subject or like philosophical type thing. Like I always try to think about like there's you as the individual, like what is my purpose? And then you have like, what is my purpose as a human? And a lot of people don't take the time to realize like, what is your role in this world? Not what you want it to be, but like, why am I here? Yeah. And, and it, is, it sounds crazy to think that, but when I start thinking too much about myself or about things that don't matter, I, I always go back to that. Why am I here? And if I die and I look at my, or when I die and I look at my story that I created here on earth, if I don't look and go, you know what, this was a great purpose that I served, I feel like I failed at life. Yeah. I, man, hey, I feel, I feel the same way. That's why I be working so hard. I got to have it though, man. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I just be, I just got to have it. I've been like that since I was, I was young though. Like, I got to have it. Like, I got to have everything that I want. And, and on top of that, I want mental relief. I want mental happiness, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I don't want to work for nobody for 15 years, 20 years, just to make 100K a year. Like, I could do that in three, two, two, one, 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 two months in my own business. Like I don't need a nine to five to get to that status. Like that just don't seem feasible to me but a lot of people are just willing to work all these years because that's what the norm is. That's what society put out there for us to follow. I ain't trying to follow that no more. So I want them ducats, man. I'm trying to be out in the hills, chilling, put my feet up, kick back. <laughs> but, to be fair, but to be fair to you, I know what you mean by, by saying that. Like, it's more so of, you know I mean? uh, it's a representation of the position you like. It also shows your growth. I remember when I was here and now I'm here. It's, it's not necessarily what the result is. It's the result tells a story of where I've come from and like what I've done throughout the time, the sacrifices. It's like, it's like a picture to me. When you look at a picture, you're not necessarily just looking at the picture. You're remembering, oh, I remember, like if somebody says a song, like and I say, hey, do you remember this song? Yeah, I remember that year it came out. And then you just start thinking about everything. Yeah, the reason why I remember what when this song came out is because I remember I was here, I was at this place. I remember it was my first time that, and I was, you know, that's how I feel that success is to me. It's it, it helps me to remember where I came from, and it shows me how much I've actually grown in the long run. And that's facts. You know what's crazy, man? My old lady, she be catching me just standing in the house sometimes, and she be like, "What's wrong with you?" And I just be looking at this crib that I'm in, man. Like, bro, I grew up in a 670 square foot home, five people living in, and got evicted when I was when we was in like at the time I got out of high school, we got evicted, moved into a smaller home. So now we got me, my auntie, my uncle, my sister pregnant, my brother in prison, my mama and daddy living there, all of that stuff, and this little little 600 square feet house and now my crib 5,104 square feet a lot of times bro the one i just brought that's how big it is so like a lot of the times i'd be walking around here bro and i'd be thinking of the same stuff that you're talking about i'm like man like this 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 is a long long way from the way i live you know coming up to where i am now but i still got a long way to go but i still be thankful for all the stuff that i'm you know, the fruits of my labor so far, 
So I just hope it just take me even further and I'll be able to provide uh, for all my partners, all my friends, all my family and all that stuff and be able to take care of everybody. That's what I really want to do. I just want everybody I love. I want everybody I love to be straight, man. I don't want no more trouble for my brother. He's still in and out of trouble now. He older than me. But, you know, I don't want no more trouble for him. I don't want no my daddy to keep having to deal with all his medical issues. Like, I want to be able to handle all that without no thought yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you need you need 5G? All right, man. Hey, hold yeah. on. Let me get out my sock real quick. This make sure you can fold these clothes up tomorrow. <laughs> like, hey, that's all you need is five? You know what I'm saying? Just, like, just toss it out. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just want to be able to take care of all my people, man. Like, that's that's really, really what I want, man. For real, for real. Now that's a that's definitely a dope mindset, and and that's what I mean. But like, that's one of the foundations of veteran influences is, is being unselfish, uh, and understanding that I have. I feel like I have a bigger, uh, even though I don't always appreciate myself, but I just know I have a bigger role to play in this world than sometimes I give myself credit for. Um, right. And I think I can um, also be, you know, I think I have the potential to be, you know, more influential than I actually am. And I feel like I'm more influential than I actually think I am sometimes. Right. And I think that's one, if I had to pick a gift, you know, I don't have the most followers in the world, but I, I think that my my ability to influence others, uh, when, you know, is it, it, pretty good. And if and, I had to pick a gift, that that's and guess what, veteran influencers. And I tell people all the time, I put my thousand something followers up against your twenty thousand any day, man. Any day, any day, y'all, any brand out there right now, you all hear me? Any brand out there right now with ten k followers or more. Whenever you want to bring out them, uh, them monthly bank receipts and challenge me to a duel, I'm ready. So let me see. If you got 10K followers or more, I guarantee you I'm making more money. Them followers don't mean nothing, man. It's the, it's the type of heart you got, the love that you share with everybody, the people that you influence, like what you got going on, the people that you continuously mentor, you take care of. That's what all this stuff about for me, man. And my, the people that are with me, they rocking with me 100%. Like, they ain't all that other fake stuff. So I ain't worried about no followers, man. My stuff is building every day. <laughs> it's all about timing, man. Because once, like you said earlier, when me and you was just chopping it up before this, it's all about time. Once that time hit, once you get to that level, all the followers are gonna pop up. Blah, 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 blah. They gonna blow. They gonna come. Do it. At they the do same it. time, that's what it is. They gonna come all at. They gonna come at the same time, dog. It's it's once you get to that certain level to where people see it and then they like, oh, that's it. Let's hop on that. So that's all it is. That's all followers is, man. I ain't tripping about that. That's gonna come with time, like you said. You just gotta keep working. All of that's gonna come, but you have to keep going. A lot of people give up. Most people give up. You just got to keep going. I know it's going to come for me. I already know. Man upstairs already told me I'm good. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see it. Talk, talk your ish. You know what I'm saying? Talk I know it, man. Like, I feel it. I know it. Like, I just know it. Like, I know it's coming. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm just preparing for it and making sure I'm ready for when the opportunity comes and I don't miss it. The man from that upper room. Upper room. <laughs> Yo, I, I love that man. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, man. Just, just speaking to you, man. I know it's been a few, a little while since we've like personally like spoke. Probably since the last podcast. I know we like message and stuff back and forth, but it's always good to talk to you because you're always so positive, and I never have to wonder if you're like telling me stuff to sound. You know what I'm saying? To, to sound, I'm not going to say sound fake, but oh, yeah. people it's never want to like talk about their, their, their true self. They, 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 they want to project themselves as something else as if they're like a robot and they don't have feelings and, oh no, I, you know, you just have to be the best. I'm like, dude, get out of here with that. I could see I right through. It's been plenty days. I don't want to quit. Thank I you. Sick. I ain't want to work. It's been, man, it's been so much emotions that go behind all this that I just don't be putting on camera. 
You know what I'm saying? It's some days to be real. Like some days I don't even ever want to pick up my phone. But I know I got to show face and I got to keep keep doing, you know, not be complacent and climb that mountain, man. Because if you sit static, man, people going to pass you up. This world moves too fast. Like you got you to gotta keep going. So I can't allow like the way I'm really feeling sometimes to distract what my whole overall mission is, man. So you got to get over that comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? I was just telling the partner of mine, a lot of people don't know that I hate filming myself. A lot of people don't know that. I hate film. Ask my wife. I hate filming myself. Like, she'll tell you. Like, especially if she around or somebody around, like, I got to cut it off. Like, I feel like a goofball. Like, and that's part of, like, how I grew up. Like, you don't want to be acting all like like this on camera and stuff where I come from. <laughs> like, nah. Right. You know, so I had to like learn, I had to make, ask my business partner here to tell you, like I had to make myself do all this stuff and learn all this stuff in order to, to do what's right by the business part. You know what I'm saying? So it's still till now, bro. I be taking like 30 videos off of one, sh trying to get one shot, because I hate being on camera. It's, but like you said, you gotta get used to it. You have to get used to it. You got to get used to this new age that we in, people. You have to. No, you're you're absolutely right. Like I said, I I bought a camera finally, and I would turn it on, but it took me so long to like actually hit record. I was <laughs> I was overthinking it. I was like, man, what are are people gonna like? <laughs> I was terrified. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel you, bro. I know and this exactly wasn't even live. Talking. This wasn't even live. Like, it, this was just when I was doing my YouTube and even on camera. Like, I was all awkward in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and, and a lot of YouTubers they take down their earlier videos because they don't want people to like search back. Yeah, but I'll never I'm gonna open book. Facts. And I, but yeah. see, I want I want people to see them like like Gary V. One of the biggest influencers out there. He left all of his videos up from like up, yep. years ago. You know what I'm that saying? Like, gotta, that, but that's the real in it. Like that's what really it takes. Like I be looking at some of my old stuff. I'm like, dang, bro, that's terrible. <laughs> and I thought it was so raw back then. <laughs> but like you gotta change all that, man. And I actually like seeing the growth though. That's why I be leaving a lot of the stuff up that I do, like in the past, like on Facebook and stuff. Like I like seeing or I reshare like all the old stuff I used to do because I it, it just made me appreciate like where I started at. I even look at my clothing a lot of times. I'm like, dang, bro, that print was ugly in the beginning. And then, like, I be, <laughs> but all that stuff, you got to critique yourself, man. You got to be, you know, you got to be realistic with yourself. Because there's a lot of stuff I ain't, I ain't like that we did, but that's part of what we had to do to get there. But one thing I am doing now, like like you said earlier, uh, me and Tweezy, like, we really taking pride in the product that we put out. I even posted, like, we not even dropping, like, the, the track suits and all all of that in the joggers like every other brand doing right now because we like really building on our foundation because once i stop working for the government like <laughs> it's gonna be the business and i gotta have all of that ready for that time you know what i'm saying my business license gotta be good my my permits gotta be good my taxes and all that gotta be good speaking of jury i got me a simple fresh piece coming yeah, it's coming. It's coming a couple more, couple more weeks <laughs> a year. But even that, man, that's part of business. That's the tax write-off. Right. People don't talk about that stuff. Y'all be seeing all these rappers and all that stuff with all that jury, and they write that stuff off on taxes. Get it right back. Or they just borrow on it. Or they just borrow it. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't stop following the social media stuff. It's fake. <laughs> Thank it's you. Fake. Say, say that one more time, please. <laughs> So I stop following this social media stuff. It was fake. The same reason I say I'll put my thousand followers up against people with 10K followers and 20K followers, and I follow them, I see they don't be doing. Man, put your books next to mine. Next one. <laughs> see, who, see, who, see who got the most on their books with your 10,000 followers. You claim you got. 
So, it's crazy though, ain't it? It's, 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 social it's, media is fake, but at the same time, it's real because it's never been a time in history where you've been able to become a millionaire so fast. It's never been a time, and that's through social media. That's through the internet, like all of this. Like it's never been a time in history to become a millionaire easier than now. Never. That's, that's a fact. That's, that's big an fact. absolute fact. Never been a time in history where you can become a millionaire this quick. And all, it, all it takes is for you to apply yourself, be studious, be on camera, put out content like you was talking about, something that I lack in that I got to get better at. Um, I got to put we out all do. I got so much content on these cameras, dog. Like, <laughs> but... You know, that'll come, it's going to get stronger as soon as I'm done with this job. Once I ain't got that nine to five, man, out of the way, oh, it's up. <laughs> it's up. I'm about to be, it's, yeah, I ain't seen Hustle until I lose that. Once, I, once that go out the window, then it's going to really be up. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking forward to seeing like your progress with that. But speaking of being a millionaire, you know what I'm saying? Somebody got a new drop coming out that just came out. Is it official yet? Yeah, yeah, it's out. Oh, I got a couple right. new drops out. I got them right here. Hold on, oh, let me, uh... Hey, pull yo, it up. I got pull this. Pull up. Pull up. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I got pull this. Up. What's up, y'all? Yeah. I'm about to help out real quick. Let me show you this drum, bro. Yeah. So, hold on. I got to change the light. I saw the first one first. What up, though? So, that's the new hat drop right here. Oh. You know what I'm saying? It's gold print. It ain't no yellow. It's gold. You know what I'm saying? So we got the blue and gold. Oh, ain't gonna lie, bro. I might, have, I might have to jock that. Yeah, you know it's hard. It's hard. Super fresh on here. And it's the real snapback. Ain't no fake material with the hard brim that don't bend like the real junk. Mm, so talk about spending it. Spending time on our product. No, it's like ain't nothing that we selling ever gonna come from us a cheap product again. Now, it ain't gonna happen. Everything we dishing out from now on is gonna be A1 quality. So we got those, the blue, blue and gold snapbacks. Ooh, the black and gold. Black and that gold drip is eating. dripping. You know what I'm saying? Winter time. The drip you know is dripping. So those are serious. We got the orange dresses, the neon orange for the ladies. With the hips. For the ladies. For the ladies. Yeah. So we got orange. We got neon green. You know what I mean? Long sleeve. Ours. All white for the ladies. All white is all right. Little, yeah. You got a little thumbprint and all of these fitted. Perfect material. Nice. You know what I mean? You got pink. Pink <laughs> neon Not dresses. The paint. Yeah. Neon paint. Uh, what else we got? Here, hey, uh, Diane says she needs that beanie, bro. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, it's on the website. Tell her to hop on. The only thing that's not on the website is the dresses. All right, but I'm, uh, I'm about to type it in the chat right now. Yeah, bet. Yeah, let her know. Sure. It's just right? So also here, hey, check this out though, bro. What's Watch that? these little things. I got these little things, man. I love them. Hold on, let me talk. Let me show you. So you see the little lights I got up here? Can you see them? Oh. <laughs> Hold on. You know, oh, you gotta do it. This one, little bay. Go through that. Right, there we go. You see it? Now I got the white up. Uh, talk about they it. They use, hey, they go, they go, the light bulbs work through your phone. That's dope. I've heard of something like that. I just never, I never got All it, right. but. Because I can't use the color light for the gold, so I'm about to show you the gold now. All right, hey, on. you over there styling. Hey, man. I'm you gotta set to the tone it. for us little people, you know? I'm trying to make it work, man. I'm trying to make it. All right, so now. Now I got the white light, so now here come the gold. So we got the long johns. Now these in the DM too, but that's real gold. Ain't no faking. And it I already did the wash test. It ain't gonna peel. None of that. Real gold print. Gold. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> got that. Got the black hoodies with the gold. Mm-hmm. Real gold. I ain't gonna lie, nice. that is clean. Yes, sir. And then we got the purple and gold. Mm-hmm. Got that Kobe. Uh, yep. So these dope too, man. These gonna be extra crazy. So y'all gotta get these. These going on the website tomorrow, but all of that other stuff are already on the website. So the purple hoodies and the dresses, you gotta DM me. You know what I'm saying? Those are the new drops, though. The hats is fire. Real, real snapbacks, not the fake ones. Hold on, let me see if I can put it on. Let me put it in. As, as you see. With all the hair? Ah. It's, still it's still in there. Oh. You are not Good. ready. Oh. I'm, touching, what's that, what's that? I'm a hustler, baby. <laughs> oh, oh, just want you to know. <laughs> You know, that's the old tunes. <laughs> yeah, man. So, but yeah, but that's that's the new drop. So we got the black hoodies with the gold. Um, we got the blue, the royal blue hats with the gold, mm. um, the gold font. Then we also got the uh, the black and gold beanies also. So th- all of those on the site now. And then the purple and gold hoodies going to be on the site tomorrow. And the dress is gonna go on the site also. But you can DM me for those if you want them. You know what I mean? So DM me. My bad, I ain't no cameras way up there. Hey, those are fresh. Thanks, bro. Fresh. Absolutely. Like I said, man, like I've watched your designs literally improve a lot. Not saying that they were ever bad, but we all have, I mean, like look at my logo in the background. I think that was more. It do, don't it? And I actually, I have a new, it's not a new logo. It's the same thing, but it's actually, uh, I, I touched it up a little bit and I changed a couple of things. And I think that new, a lot of people are saying the new logo looks better. So it's not like it's one is here and one's here. It's like one's one A, the other one's one B. You know what I'm saying? So that now that's hard though. I like this one. I can't wait. I need to order my uh, hoodie and my face mask. I want the face mask to go with it so I can kill them with the whole combo. You know, I like the combo. I need the whole thing. I got to be fresh to death. Hey, you know, I'm going to hit you up. I got some questions about uh, some clothing stuff because as you see, like I said, I rock people. This is my boy, Tay, Culture Junkie. This dude is... It, it is, dude. And I actually have a... I, I bought a, a sweatsuit to match and I got a... Sh- I got a shirt. So I got a shirt and a sweat shoot to match. But he, so he's got Culture Junkie and he's got this brand called Bad Manners. Mm. Dude, and it's like, he's out of Chicago. Like this dude knows everything about fashion. Me and him spoke for like two hours one day. I had to use the bathroom the whole time. But I didn't want to leave because he got so much information. And, you know, he was willing to give out, you know what I'm saying? Hey, he was willing to give out information. You got to be a sponge, bro. You got to be a sponge, man. When I yeah. be hearing people talk business, boy, I be like, huh? Say what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what y'all say? I be out in public and stuff. I be like, oh, yeah, what? What, what y'all grossing? What y'all doing? <laughs> What's your net income? What you doing? What you talking about? <laughs> yeah, man, I feel you, bro. That's raw though. I love that uh, logo you got too, man. That's dope. I, man, to be honest, man, you need the flowers too, bro. Cause like I really, I really be watching like the stuff that you do, the stuff Tammy do. Like I be paying attention, bro. And I remember when y'all first like got it kicking off, and it was like like a couple of hundred people on there, and then it was like less than like a month or two later, I hopped on there. That job was like two, three G's on there. I was like, hold up. Last time I got on here, it was like 232 views. Now I get on here a couple weeks later, it was like two, 3,000 on here. And that 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 day, I, I remember telling my wife, I was like, man, that's wrong. That goes to show you if you just do it. You just put the content out there, stop holding back, stop talking, and just execute, man. Like, everybody got to stop talking. Stop all that talking and just execute. Everybody know what they got to do. You know what you got to do. It's yep. just like these workout people. People that like to work out and stuff. They always, what, 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 what people always ask, bro, 
they always be like, oh, what, what type of workout plan do you do? That's always <laughs> what they say. Nah, you just got to work out. You got to take your sweat. Y'all been asking the same question for seven years. So it's the same thing with this stuff, man. You just got to do it. You got to put the work in. Once you put the work in, it's going to start coming together. You know what I'm saying? Keep your team solid. Keep your head full. That's it. <laughs> No, that's, that's, that's crazy that you say that. Like I said, I know there's a lot of other people that are, you know, that they're, they're trying to be in a position that you're in, you know, they, whether they're a designer or they're just like a young entrepreneur or a, a veteran influencer or, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or somebody that's looking to, that are active duty and maybe, or just got out and they're looking to find out what their niche is. What type of advice do you have for those people that are like kind of seeking that whole, that they're, they're on their path to where they, they want to be? Do what you feel, not what everybody else tell you to do. If you got an idea and you feel strongly about it, do what you feel. You know, and the reason why I say that is because most of the advice that people give is off of their failures. You get what I'm saying? Most advice that people usually give is off of failures that they experience in their life. That don't necessarily mean that you're going to run into the same thing. You get what I'm saying? So I always tell people, if you got an idea, don't let nobody ruin that by them telling you how it's not going to work or how you need to do it this way or how you need to do it that way. Execute it, try it, and fail first. Fail first, like you get you gotta try and fail first. Like <laughs> if 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 you won't fail, then you let, you never know. And if you ain't trying, you'll never know neither. So I always just tell people that if you got something in your mind that you want to do, just do it. You can ask advice, you can take pointers, but don't just don't just take people advice and not do what you had originally planned, all because somebody else said, Oh, don't do it that way, cause this gonna happen. That happened in their life. That don't mean it's going to happen in mine. You know what I'm saying? So just um, pay attention to the advice you get and execute whatever it is that you got that you feel strongly about. Execute on that. And don't worry about nobody else um, being in your way or, or changing your mindset. Like, do what you feel is right for, uh, for you. You know what I'm saying? So that's mm. why I like Hey, you heard the man. Do what you do. Don't give up. Continue pushing and ask questions. Surround yourself with people that are willing to help you. People that care that's care it. about your well-being. That's it, man. And so I know that sounds crazy. What you just said, like, and it's hard for a lot of people. It's hard for me. But if you don't sur start surrounding yourself with people that got like minds and better minds than you, all that other stuff, you gotta get it out your way. Like you can't be in, you can't be in them circles where you got people that I don't complain. All they do is complain all day, and they got negative stuff to say all day. All that stuff secretly weighs heavy on you. You know what I'm saying? Carrying other people' weight is is heavy, man. So you can't you can't just go around being around them type of people that's miserable all the time. Even if they're your friends and family, like you gotta. And be real. That's the, the that's the problem, bro. Everybody not real, dog. Like I will tell you, no. I will tell you to your face, you wrong. I will tell you, like, stop being so fake. Be real. You know what I'm saying? Be real. If you be real and you live your life real, you ain't gotta worry about none of this other faking and, and what they call it now, capping and all that. You ain't got to worry about none of that. What the young guys call it, captain? That big C cap. No, no cap. Just be real. Tell people how you feel and be honest with people and, and, and let them know. You know what I'm saying? Just be real and you'll be straight. That's all it is. Ain't no rocket science. <laughs> be real, fair, and have an open and kind heart, man, because there's a lot of people going through it in the United States right now, bro. Big time. I just, you know, the true story. I just had right. one of my close friends, bro, curse me out the other, like three nights ago. Out the blue. Messes me, asked me to do something for him. I told him no. Curse me all the way out. Called me all kind of names. 
Then I, then I started to respond to something crazy, and then I sat there and I thought about it, cause I'm older now, man. Like yeah. I think different now, bro. Now you call me a a hole and all of that. <laughs> I ain't. I just be like, okay, bro. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to prove. You know how I many people I done beat up in my life? I can't even count on twenty hands. I want yeah. my fingers broken out. I ain't got nothing to prove about my toughness. I'm talking about this dude cursed me all the way. I called me all kind of names. I said, okay. And then I wrote him and I told him, I said, man, you got to you gotta be truthful to yourself. You said, hey, you're mad because I'm telling you no that I'm not going to do this for you because of something that you caused in your life right. or something that happened in your life. You can't depend on another man to grab your hand and take you somewhere. And not saying that's what he wanted. I'm just saying, like, you got to stand on your business and handle it. And he got so upset about that, but at the same time, I stepped back and I thought about it. I was like, what is this man really going through to get that mad at me, somebody who's always supporting him? Mm -hmm. I was like, what's he really, really going through? So I ain't even get mad. I told myself at that point, I just wrote him a message. I said, hey, regardless of all that stuff you're talking about, you got to be truthful with yourself. You got to stand on your business. And you're wrong for what you said. And that's it. And I let it go. And then like three days later, this morning, matter of fact, he sent me a message and apologized. And I could have been like, F you. Let's meet up. Let me beat you up. And shoot you up. And all kind of, all kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I could have did all of that. And we could have fought and all of that. But like, man, people going through it right now, man. People going through all kind of stuff in their life. And I'm older now, man. Like, so I just think differently about it. Like, what's me arguing with I'm going to change my life right now? You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's you got to be humble, man, and, and really care about people and what's going on, especially right now. Because the world we're living in right now is bad, man. So we, we really got to be humble and mindful of what everybody around us is going through. You know what I'm saying? So true story. That is, you know, I try to explain it to so many people because they're dead set on if X plus Y equals this, then this has to happen. If this person pushes me, then I have to do this. There's no way around it. If this person says this to me, I will automatically do X, Y, and Z. And it's like, it, you know, bogus, bro. Yeah, when I was young. Like, yeah, and everybody that I grew up around. And especially when I got in the military, they would tell you, I'd be the first one to knock somebody out, punch somebody in their mouth, all that stuff. But now, oh, man, bro, you can call me all kind of names. I'm just going to look at you and grin a little bit. Just don't get too close. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, though, man, there's people going through it, man. Like, right now, this time that we're living in, dog, and, like, people not even acknowledging the fact what people really going through right now. Like, it's millions of people in America right now with no jobs, with no nothing. Did you see how long the lines was for turkeys for Thanksgiving this year? No. All across the United States? I'm talking about whole highways full of trying to get off on certain exits to get free turkeys and stuff. That goes to show you, like, how bad the employment rate is right now in this world. And, like, people just taking all that for granted. But it's people really going through it right now, man. So you got to be mindful of, mindful of that and just stand on good business, man. That's all it is. Man, not too crazy. Be fair and be truthful. That's, actually, that's a great lesson. Like I said, I, a lot of people, they don't have it in their heart to fully, um, you know, express empathy. And that's, to me, that's one of the hardest things, especially when you feel a certain way about something. What are your actions at that point? Because, you know, they always say, you know, it, it's easy to, to be a certain way when things are going good. But when things are going bad, to me, that's where your true character comes out. You know, what are you willing to endure? Like, how much... Are you willing to feel a certain way, but and still act how you should? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. People like to act on how they feel all the time, as opposed to like what they should actually do, and you know what their logical thoughts are with it. So that that makes you even a stronger of a person. Is it is it bedtime? <laughs> yeah, you go on the bed, buddy. Man. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I ain't getting no doubt. Okay, come on. Where my dad at though? You gonna leave me hanging? See how he do me, bro. He trying to go to bed. Gonna leave him cold. Dap his daddy up. <laughs> there we go. Pay attention.
attention and be confident. Hey, I My love dog. that, man. I love that. But hey, um, I don't want to hold you up too long, but um, I do want to know, do you what's I mean, what we got in the future of Semper Fresh? Like, what we got in the near future? Is there anything you can like kind of link out to us? Yeah, uh, uh, I can show you. Matter of fact, let me show you something I'm playing with right now. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, this exclusive right here. You know what I'm saying? We got that, ex that exclusive stuff. Thank you guys so much for those of you that are joining right now that have joined, taking the time out of your day to comment and to join the veteran influencers. Hey, we're back on it. We're going to start doing this a lot more often. We're going to have a lot more content for you guys. We're going to have a lot more influencers on here as well. Hey, what so we this, the, this the crew neck that I just did. So it's got the pink and the purple on it. So this going to be hmm. for the females, though. It's going to be hard. Oh, and I then, rock it. All right. It's going to be hard. That's going to be hard. And then the males. Bro. Royal Blue Jump. Never been dropped before. So this one coming now. Pay attention to the, the eyeballs, bro. See that color? You don't get that color. No. Hold on. Where we at? Where we at on this one? Uh, see that yeah. color? I see you trying to put the watch in the camera. You ain't slick. Bro, yeah. you ain't slick. I see what you're doing. Man, that thing don't, that don't even work, man. I don't know where that came. That's my wedding gift, man. It's yeah. actually a dope watch, bro. Every time you take it off, you got to, when you put it back on, you got to reset it. It don't never run out of batteries. It's dope. Yeah, like it automatically calibrates once you put it back on and then you just reset it and then it's good. That's it. So it'll never die. It's on that's, key that's fancy, bro. Yeah, it's hard, man. My old lady got it for me for my wedding. I forget. Um, actually, it's from Express. Ain't nothing crazy. A couple hundred. Not too much. Well, ain't something, nothing. something. Ain't, ain't, no, ain't no rapper. Ain't no rapper $25,000 not watch. <laughs> Hey, hey, to some people, you know what I'm saying? We, we yeah. can't all do what you do, you know what I'm saying? Well, no, I can't afford that. I can't afford but, uh, that. Now, now, how much in the near future are those coming out? Man, I'm thinking January I'm going to drop. Uh, well, that black, that, that purple and pink one for the females, I'm going to probably drop that in a couple, probably like next week. Uh, that royal blue and black, that's probably coming uh, next Probably like in January, and then I'm gonna have some. Uh, hold on, where'd you go? Yeah, you still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then I'm gonna have like some. Um, we we working on some some tracksuits or some joggers right now, so those probably gonna drop in January, like right when they get real cold, right towards the middle of the end of January. So them jog these joggers gonna be raw though. Like we've been taking our time with them. We don't want to do too much, nothing crazy. So. That's what we focusing on right now, um, but man, honestly, I'm I'm starting to really focus on customs. Like that's what me and my business partner have been fo focusing on. Like actually learning how to become um, an actual manufacturer to like another small business. So that's kind of one of the small things that we focusing on right now. Because I want to be the middleman now. Yeah, well, I'm already doing that because I'm printing the stuff myself now. So I, what I'm trying to do is I'm I'm trying to be somebody else's middleman. So I want them to pay me to print their stuff and then I send it to them. So oh, I do all, the, you know what I mean? Like I, I do all the printing, I order the materials and then I send it to them. So me and Antoine have been heavy with that lately, trying to focus in on getting the numbers correct, how much we going to charge per shirt, her color change. It's so much involved with that stuff that people don't realize, like color change, the size of the design, like all type of stuff. So we focusing on that right now, trying to figure out how to actually be uh, manufactured to other brands. So, which comes with getting more people on my team. <laughs> so yeah, man, but we working, like man. Like, I'm, I'm super excited about this year coming. I, I know people be saying it, but I really wholeheartedly feel that this year is going to be our best. This is going to be the year where our brand just like... Cause 21? We got, we got everything on lock now. We, we got all our finances and stuff in the right spot. Mm. All our books getting ready to be in the, almost in the right spot. 
the lawyer and all that stuff. So once we get all of that completely, completely handled in the next like month or two, then we about to take it off for real. And then I won't be working neither by then. So it's going to be, it's, it's up. And what the, that, what, that's another one of young folks say? It's up. It's up. No one cap. Two people say it. No cap. <laughs> Dude, that is, it is so great to see like oh, how much yeah. you're constantly improving. And I'm glad that we did this like kind of longer interview. That way in the future, we could do these quick like little 15 minutes, you know what I'm yeah, saying? And whenever you got something going on, just like call up real quick. Like, hey, let's knock this out. And, you know, you could be on site somewhere. And eventually I'm trying to do these on site ones to where, you know what I'm saying? I got my, my camera out and I got like a little boom mic or something like that. And that's eventually when I have a team. But I'm I'm That's trying to I'm trying to be media and like as far as for you know influencers, um, and I'm also trying to be on here just promoting other people. You know what I'm saying? So, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Hey man, you man, y'all about you about to take off with this man? You just gotta keep going. That's it. I keep saying that. Everybody keep asking me like, "What do you think about that part? I'm like, "Bro, it's wrong. <laughs> it's about to take off. Like I know it is. If y'all don't Appreciate stop, that. it's gonna take off." I seen a, another podcast close to y'all's recently, uh, like last year. Okay. But it stopped. They stopped going. And I think they was going to be just as big or bigger than what y'all got going. Then y'all popped up. And I was like, well, if they don't stop, then they going to have the torch. And y'all ain't stopped yet. So I really feel like y'all are about to kick in and take off, bro. Like, it's raw. Like, it ain't nobody else topping that. This type of podcast, not that I'm watching, especially That's not no military folks. Yeah, much appreciated that. Yeah, Oscar Vett is definitely, you know, we got season two coming up and it's looking like toward the middle to end of January. So right now we're actually planning uh, for season two for that. And oh man, that's. I'm looking forward to it. We're, we're already creating design. I can't, wait. I can't wait to see what you're going to do with this one, though. Yeah. We, oh, we got some. We got some next level stuff. Like we, as far as information for the veteran community, we have, we already have a couple like uh, segments locked that are going to take the thinking and it's gonna help the, I promise you, it's gonna help the veteran community out so much. So a lot of questions that the veteran community been asking, we're gonna be able to, uh, we're gonna have some guests on there that are gonna be speaking about that. And it's, it's, it's stuff that's gonna benefit everybody. Yeah, that's hard. Right. You can't beat that. I'm telling you, man. All y'all got to do is keep going. Ain't going. Ain't nobody going to be touching that. Watch. Mark my words. I appreciate that, Mark, man. Mark my words. Nah, but for real, man, I'm proud. I'm proud of you, man. Like Thank since you. day one, yeah. since the first time you, me and you ever kicked it, been 100 percent real with me. Show man love. Always, Always tapping in. I be trying to do the same for you. And just keep it going, man, because you got to, there ain't too many people like that, man. You know, I ain't even, to be real, I wasn't like that. I ain't care about none of this stuff until I started doing it. And then I was like, oh, okay, now, now I get it. But, yeah, so we just got to keep on keeping our circle, keep keep moving, keep pushing, get, keep the right people around you. You got I'm ready, to, man. man. I'm ready. I know you're ready. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. And make sure you guys go out, man. Like, su support the people that are around you. You know what I'm saying? SemperFreshClothing.com. As soon as he dropped this, I already told him I was going to cop it. Because, I mean, not to, you know, throw my name out there because I want to do it. You know what That's I'm saying? That's the OG you got on, too. Yes. You That's know what I'm saying? OG. That's the yeah. real story. I love that joke. I got it on, too. Exactly. That's, that's, the, that's the one, man. That was that was that's the first logo that we came up with. That's the first one. I remember we we that's the same thing. We same process for all the logos. Me and Tweezy, we get to talking, get talking about like what we thinking. Then we hit our gra graphic designer, uh, 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 Deagle, old Tom Deagle. We hit him up, and then he created. He dope, man. He a graphic designer for the Secret Service. So, but he's been doing all of our logos since the beginning. So we'll talk to him on the phone. And he'll just keep drawing until and keep sending us, sending it over and over again until it's exactly how we want it. Like literally, that's how we do each logo. So it's wrong. Yep. That's what's up, man.
Uh, I definitely want to give a big shout out to you, man. I appreciate you taking time out of your day because, especially like in the beginning, you saw about the technical difficulties, man. Man, that thing was crazy. <laughs> bro. You know how it be like that, though, man. I'm used to it, man. And then it just randomly starts working. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, but, man, it be like that, bro. You know how I know. But the, the fact that you took time out of your day, you know what I'm saying, and, and you know, to come on the platform, I know it's each one teach one and uh, one hand washes the other, but it, it's good that you're the first person to, to help me get this whole veteran influencer thing going again. You know what I'm saying? And I want to do a lot more. Uh, I just got to kind of um, tune in with my, my editor as well, make sure we're on the same page, and I'm going to keep right. this button, you know, keep these interviews right. coming. Uh, you got it, man. I'm, I'm still, I'm full of support, man. I'm proud of you. Keep going, man. Absolutely, we don't stop. <laughs> Until the casket drop. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, big dog, man. Hey, I appreciate you. Like I said, um, anytime, whenever you got something coming up, or you want to talk about something to help promote. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. Let's get you on the show, and we gonna do it. My God. Yeah, man. Yeah, most definitely, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate the time and all the love, bro. Let's keep it up. Respect. Always. Always. All right, big dog. Appreciate you. I got some questions for you if you got some time. I don't know if you're busy. I don't yeah, know if you yeah. do, but... <laughs> All right. Well, so when we get off here, I'm, I got some questions I want to ask like, what's going on with like what you got going on, but... To everybody out there that tuned in, thank you guys so much, man. And you know, for you guys taking time out of your day to say what's up to your people, we gonna we gonna keep this whole train going, you know. Boss man, y'all gonna see me in about two more years, millions. I'm gonna take one of them pictures with the money like the rappers do. <laughs> <laughs> Next to your ear? <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Hey, don't be running out on the floor, one, I had diapers. <laughs> hey, yo, I saw that. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> All right, bro. All right, man. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, bro. Peace.